get to you right now. Just ask that you would speak to us and move us to action today. We pray this in your name. Amen. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody watching on Facebook. I just want to start out today by asking a question, as I usually do. Uh, What are some absolutes in your life? I'll say it again. What are some absolutes in your life? What are your values? What do you, you believe? What are your beliefs? Some things that are in your life that are rock solid and you're just not willing to budge from them. You know, what do you take pride in? How do you show it? I mean, we have so many different things that uh, are part of our lives and we say to ourselves, I'm not budging from this point. I'm not moving from this. I'm not moving from that. And, and we show our support for these things. We show that we believe in these things by many different things. We have videos and posts that we put on Facebook to show what we support. We get clothing that represents our certain values or what we like or dislike, right? We, we might even outwardly speak about things that we believe in to others. We show our, our opinions and facts, and we love to do so. We even try to convince others to believe the same things that we believe. And sometimes we get some backlash, and sometimes we don't. And <clears throat> even if someone tried to challenge your beliefs, you would stand on them no matter what. If somebody tried to challenge you to do someone else, you'd say, mm, I don't think this is an area in my life that I'm moving from at this point. I don't think this is an area in my life that I'm ever going to move from. Especially when it comes to impacting us personally. Right, we have some things that in our lives that we say, there's no way that I'm giving this up, there's no way I'm doing that, there's no way I'm doing this. We go at a distance for certain things, which is fine. We'll move mountains to do certain things in our life, which is fine, as long as they're about Jesus, right? But other than that, we we have things in our lives that, apart from God, that we're just not willing to budge on always. And we have some things in our lives that, about our faith, that we're just not willing to budge on. Again, you know, we post on Facebook, we post on social media about God, and we wear clothes with scripture on them, and at times we freely express our faith, whether it's with our life or with our actions. And <clears throat> sometimes we take criticism for it, sometimes we're embraced for it, and we'll try to do anything to stand for our faith. But I don't know if we'll go to distance like we will for these other things. I don't know if we'll go at a distance in our faith as we would for all these other beliefs, all these other absolutes, all these other things in our life like we would our faith. We have things that <clears throat> we talk to God about and we say, you know, I really don't want to remove this, right? I really don't want this taken out of my life. I, I don't want to budge on this. I don't want to go this far with you, God. And that's as far as we go with him. And we have these beliefs and we have these other things that in our lives that we try to hold on to. And I don't think there's anything wrong with having certain things that you like to do. I don't think there's anything wrong with setting some time aside to do certain things. Or having nice things in your life or having this or having that. But in our life, we, we make our life all about having these things or doing these things instead of having Jesus as the absolute in our life. Instead of having a willing heart that says, God, no matter what it is, if it gets in the way of me and you, 
I'm willing to give it up. And no matter where you're at in your walk with Jesus, no matter where you're at in your life, whether you're a new Christian or you've been a Christian for most of your life, at some point or another, even right now, you probably have a list of things where you're just saying, Lord, I'm not sure if I want to move on them. And sometimes those things are required to continue this journey with Jesus. Because walking with Jesus takes commitment, and you can guarantee you can guarantee that as you're walking with Jesus, he's going to want to change your life. He's going to want to remove stuff. He's going to want to add stuff in. He's going to want to challenge you to become this person that you can never become on your own. And as you continue the walk with God, it only gets harder and harder. Not in the sense of that his work is <clears throat> burdensome or that it's too much for us. Well, it's too much for us in our own strength. But the challenges that Jesus brings into our life and the things that God wants to do in our lives are a lot bigger and are a lot harder at times. And there's never a point in your life, there's never a point in your walk with Jesus that if you're taking it serious, that it gets any easier. There might be times where there's not as much pressure, but other than that, there's always going to be something that wants to challenge your faith. There's always going to be something that wants to challenge your relationship with God. And, and sometimes it comes from ourselves. Sometimes we set up these challenges in our life. Sometimes it's the devil. Or sometimes the devil uses the things that we, won't, that we say are absolutes and we won't move from to challenge us even more. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. And you look at the first part of this verse, it says, be alert and of sober mind, because the devil is trying to devour you. He prowls around like a lion. He's trying to devour us. And these things that we keep in our life, these things that we say are absolutes, that we don't want to budge on with God, they put some distance in the relationship. They change our mindset. They make us less alert and less sensitive to what God is doing in our minds, in our lives. And as you get closer and closer to God, or as you try to get closer and closer to God, or as you go further and further down this journey, all hell is going to try and break loose on your life. And the devil is going to look for every and any opportunity to compromise what you believe about Jesus. And sometimes he... A lot of times he takes the things that you already have in place to do so. To put you in a situation to mess up your testimony to other people. And most of us, <clears throat> and most of all, get us to the end of ourselves or get us to a point where we just say, I don't even know if I want to walk this walk with God. No one's exempt from it. It's not easy for anyone to have a relationship with Jesus. Everyone has to face these serious issues on a daily basis. And Jesus talks about it. He talks about how hard the journey is. He talks about the sacrifices that we have to make. He says that if you want to be my disciple, you've got to take up your cross and d die daily. He talks about, you know, people leaving their families and their livelihoods to come and follow him and today I got a couple more verses that I really want to talk about that I feel emphasize this a little more that kind of really hit on what I'm trying to talk about today and it's in Matthew chapter 7 verses 13 and 14 it says enter, enter through the narrow gate for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, 
and narrow the road that leads to life and only a few find it. And you see, as Christians, we start off on that narrow road. When you first give your life to Jesus, when everything's exciting and everything is brand new, we, we start on that narrow road. But after some time, we tend to drift from one side or the other. We get our eyes caught up on things that shouldn't be, and they're not always intended We don't always intend for it to be that way. And sometimes we don't even consider what these things are doing to our relationship with God. It just seems like we're living life and trying to fit God in as much as we can. Trying to do things to please God or just keep up an appearance with God and with other people, of course. Instead of Jesus being our whole life and letting everything come after let it everything else take second place to jesus's lordship in our life you know even today we were just talking about you can't season your life with jesus jesus has to be the main thing he has to be your portion he has to be your all in all it's like when you have a thanksgiving meal and you prepare all this delicious food. <clears throat> and you take everything that you've done and you put it into this food and it becomes a delicious meal, right? And then you get hungry later. And you're not satisfied and you want some more food and you want some more food. Well, you understand that with God, when God is our Thanksgiving meal, when God is our portion, and he's just not our seasoning on the food, when he's not second place to these other things, we're not as hungry. And we are, when we are hungry, we know exactly where to go back to to be filled again. But instead of letting God be our portion... We say things like, well, God sees that I'm trying, which he does. He knows my true intentions, even though he knows my true intentions. He knows what I'm trying to do for him. He knows that I still love him. And me and God have an understanding about certain things, and I'm sure he's okay with this. Not realizing that God doesn't want any compromise in our lives at all. Not realizing that God doesn't take second place to nobody. Even if we put something else ahead of God, he's still creator of all things and Lord of King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And what we don't realize is that we don't have an understanding with God. We have a misunderstanding of what God truly wants in our lives. We have a misunderstanding on how, what kind of relationship God wants to have with us. Instead of fully grasping that, instead of fully understanding that, we tend to make excuses for why we can't be fully obedient to God. Giving ourselves enough reasons as to why we can't fully submit to what God's saying to us. And like I said, don't get me wrong, God understands all the things we deal with. He understands the pressures we have to face, and he understands that we're going to mess up at times. And praise Jesus for his grace and mercy and for his never-ending forgiveness. But he also knows if we truly intend to act on what he says. He also knows where our commitment really is. And a lot of times we try to walk as close as we can to the world and live our lives the way we want to live them and still try to keep an appearance of being faithful to God. Psalm 51, verses 16 to 17 says, You do not desire a sacrifice, or I would offer one. You do not want a burnt offering. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O God. Honestly, guys, we try to take shortcuts 
when we get on this narrow road sometimes. We try to take shortcuts and act as if they would please God. We try to take shortcuts and give the illusion that we're something when we're not. We try to do as much as we can without fully committing to what God says in his word at times. We say, God, we'll do A, B, C, and D and think that pleases him. And to a certain extent, some of those things might please God. But if it's just to keep up an appearance, if it's just for everybody to say, look at this guy, look at me, look at me, look at me doing this for Jesus, look at me doing for th- that for Jesus, it's nothing but a sacrifice that God does not desire. You see, when we talk about all these things we want and desire, all these nice things we want to do, or all these other things we take and put them in front of God, it's not that those things are a bad thing, it's just we put them ahead of God, and God wants our hearts and not these silly actions that we try to do for Him. He wants all those things to be second place. He wants to say, you know, if I asked you to give that up right now, Would you do it? Is it a deal breaker for you? Would you go and do something else? Would you be done with me? He's giving you an Abraham and Isaac moment. You know, when God said that he's going to give him one son, he's going to give him a son to carry on his legacy. He's going to make him the father of many nations, right? And then God says... Take your son to the altar. And he's faced with this moment of, wow, am I going to do what God says and trust him for who he is and take my son to the altar, knowing that God's going to intervene somehow? Or am I just going to dismiss what God said and go and do my own thing still? And we know that at the end of that story, at the end of that testimony, that God gave him a ram in the thicket to replace the sacrifice, right? So he wouldn't have to sacrifice his son. And all God was doing was testing Abraham to make sure he knew where his heart was with God. To make sure he knew that he would do whatever to please his father. And when we do the same as Abraham, when we have these hearts that says, Lord, whatever it is that you want me to give up, I'm willing. Even if you never give it back to me, it makes walking this narrow road a lot easier. It doesn't change our circumstances, but it gives us peace and comfort knowing that God is with us. Knowing that we can't fail because God has called us to do whatever it is, and I don't have to carry all this extra weight of all these other things that I want to bring with me. But when we try to take these shortcuts or jump ahead of God, or when we try to bring all these extra things into our life, We can't stand in the confidence or the peace that God gives us. Even if those choices seem very logical, if they're well thought out and well planned out, if it goes against what God's telling you, it won't satisfy you. It won't come to prevail, or maybe it will come to play out, and maybe it will prevail, but at the end of the day, you have to take an account to God and say, I did things my way when you're face to face with them in heaven. The narrow road is the only thing that will satisfy us. The narrow road, doing the hard things that God tells us to do, you know, <clears throat> standing on what we truly believe about God, not allowing compromise into our life. That's the only thing that will satisfy us. That's the only thing that will keep us in a right relationship with God when, when Jesus When God has our hearts, and our hearts alone, and and nothing else has them as well. 
And as crazy as that might sound, it's very true. Because there's comfort in being guided by God. He completes us in every way, even when it doesn't seem like it. When our eyes lie to us and tell us that there's no way I'm walking this way, there's no way that I'm continuing to go down this narrow road, and we, when we push past all that and just are obedient to God, we can have assurance that God is going to do something amazing with this time in your life. He takes the work that you put in, your obedience to Him, and He actually turns it into something. And that's why you can have peace on the narrow road because you know that whatever God's asking you to do, he's not, he's not doing it to play games with you. He's not asking you to do it for no reason. You know, you can trust that God is very purposeful in every part of your life and can use everything for his glory. Psalm 25 says that, 25 <clears throat> verses 3 to 5 says, uh, No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame. But shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are my God. You are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Man, if that's something... If there's anything you can hold on to in this message, I would say it's that. That you'll never be put to shame when you trust God. Not only that, but He'll teach you how to be victorious. He'll guide you in truth and He'll teach you when you put your hope in Him. You won't feel like you have to run away from your problems anymore when you take the narrow road. Because it's a road of victory and deliverance. And when we really take in all that God's trying to do in our lives, you look back and you get to see the progress made and be inspired to make more and more progress. Being able to stay focused on who you are and who God is and what, what he's called you to for this day. You know, just today alone, I'm seeing God do so much in our church just from being here from a couple hours, man, it's just like God was just hitting me with one thing after another after another. And I I got a testimony, you know, I just want to brag on one of my brothers. I'm, I'm going to leave the names out, but, you know, there's a guy who made some mistakes in life and he, you know, he really didn't have a choice. He had to move out of his parents' house. He had to go do something else because they just weren't putting up with his stuff anymore. And he had a couple choices he could make. And he ended up choosing the right one. He took the narrow road in his life. And over the past few months, none of it has been easy for him. But one thing after another started happening in his life. He started experiencing God more and more through his obedience. And it first started out with him giving his life to the Lord. He gave his life to Jesus, and now he has a brand new life, and he can understand the things of God. And he can also understand how real God is now and how intentional he is in his life. And that he's not here on this narrow road for no reason. And as he continues to walk this walk throughout the past few months, you know, like I said, it hasn't been easy for him. He's faced a lot of challenges. He's been challenged himself and his character. And he's done very well with it. And as a result, you know, God is doing so many things in his life. Like I said, a few, a few, not, yeah, a few weeks ago when we had our carnival, this woman, she got led to the Lord. And man, after she got led to Jesus, it's like God took him and just plugged him in right away into her life and her boyfriend's life. And it's just been crazy ever since. You know, this girl, she has not left the church, her and her boyfriend. She stopped working on Sundays. <clears throat> and even today, even this past weekend, they brought a friend to Bible study on Friday. And they brought four more people with them to church today. <clears throat> and I
and I continue to see them grow and grow, and I, and I would say it's a result of my brother taking this narrow road and taking all the things that life and all the things that God is allowing to come in his life and say, God, I just want to have victory. I don't want to run away from these things. I don't want to go off and do my own thing. And even on the days that I do want to go do my own thing, God, I'm going to try my hardest to submit to you. And as a result, he's having an impact on people's lives, man, that I don't even understand. I don't even know if he fully understands what's happening in the lives of these people right now. I don't even know if he fully understands how God is using him to impact his kingdom right now. And it's all because he decided to take the narrow road, to take the harder way to do things. Because he decided to, that everything that he could do on his own was garbage and that his own understanding and his own choices could do nothing for him in his life. The lifestyle that he was living, it was, it was just garbage. And the absolutes that he once believed that they can just no longer be in his life and he's just allowing Jesus to have lordship now is this guy perfect absolutely not does he do everything right absolutely not but do any of us you know one thing that God's been showing me is that you know if you just just continue to walk this journey with him that if you just continue to try your hardest to be faithful and available and allow him to use you in whatever way even when you mess up when you do things the wrong way sometimes God will use you despite you doesn't mean that we should just continue to live in our sin but we can know that man we're freely forgiven that we're bought at a price that, you know, God's grace is never ending for us, and we can use that to be victorious in our lives. <clears throat> and so today, as you hear all this, I want you to understand that, you know, doing things God's way is never easy. It takes sacrifice, it takes commitment. But it's so well worth it. It's so worth to see the impact that you can have on God's church, on a lost world, the, the impact that God can have on your life when you're willing to let him do so. But you understand it can't be done by taking the wide road. There's never a time where we can just pull over as God's church and say, I'm going to sit on the sidelines because as soon as you get saved, as soon as you give your life to Jesus, man, you're in the game. You're not second string. You're not third string. You're not the water boy. You're in the game. You're not a fan. You can't just go sit up in the stands. You got to understand that God is wanting to use you so desperately, not because he needs to, but because he loves you so much and he has a life that's so much bigger than you can ever imagine. But it doesn't come without challenges. It can be lonely to walk down this narrow road. It can make you rethink everything you believe. It's not for the faint at heart. And sometimes it makes you ask yourself, is it worth the risk? But you have to ask yourself, would it be better to miss what God's doing in your life? To look back and say, what if I would have just stuck with it? To be able to hear about, for you to have to go through your life and hear about the experiences that you should have had with God that everyone else is having right now. You know, when we... <clears throat> finished the sanctuary and everything was done in here you know we were all just taken back and we were so appreciative of what God had done here in our church and 
There are some people who long ago, 20, 30 years ago, probably about 20 years ago, you know, were first a part of this church, and, and this is the vision that God gave them, what we're sitting in right now. You know, our beautiful foyer and sanctuary, all the ministries that God has going on in our church and all the people's lives that he's impacting, man, that, that was part of their vision. It was something that they shared together as a church, and some of them are gone. Some of them stopped coming to church. Some of them are going to a different church. I don't know, I don't know what's going on in their lives. And when we finished our sanctuary, some of those people, they came back and they just said, it's everything that we said it would be. It's everything that God said it would be. It's everything that God told us it would be, right? And instead of having that experience for themselves, it's just one of those God stories that they get to hear. It's one of those God stories that they never got to be a part of. Don't let that be your life today. Don't pull over and take a break. Don't try and take any shortcuts with God and to only look back in your life and say, Wow, what would have happened if I would have just stuck it out? What would have happened if I would have just been faithful to what God was doing in my life and not given up? Be the one who has these powerful testimonies to inspire others to do the same. Be the one standing in someone's corner as you leave here today to say, I know that you're going through so much right now. I know that it feels like, yeah, no air to breathe, that there's nothing that can happen right now, that God's not going to show up. I don't got any answers for you. I, I don't have any solutions to make your problem better other than I know that God is faithful and I'm going to walk this walk with you as well. Can you leave here today to have the confidence that no matter what everybody else is doing, no matter what everybody else is allowing into their lives or what they're doing with their lives, that you're going to follow God no matter the cost, knowing that God is going to use you no matter what you face. That you get to be the one to experience this abundant life. And as you live this abundant life, others will join you as well. And they'll be transformed because they see the Jesus in you. Maybe you're here today and you pulled over and parked. And you have all these regrets and you're not sure what to do with your life now. I'm just going to say... Man, don't let those regrets hold you back. Don't let those mistakes that you did in the past hold you back from what God is trying to do right now. Come back to the table and let God be your all in all. Let Him be your portion. Because you understand that God's not holding any of this sin against you. He's not holding any of your mistakes against you. In fact, he knew that you would do them. Not that God set you up to fail and not that God wanted you to do these things. But he knows the intentions of our heart. He knows who we are. He knows all the things that we got going on. And he, he knows that when we stray away from him, we're going to have to face the results of our actions. But at the end of the day, he's not sitting there shaking his fist at you. In fact, he's mourning over you. In fact, he has a desire for you to come back and take your seat at the table as a son and daughter. To take your past experiences, the scars that you bear, and use them for someone else's protection. To show someone else that when you get off this narrow road and you decide to go and do your own thing, you're going to get tore up. You're going to flip your car. You're going to catch 
<clears throat> you're going to run into some huge boulders you didn't even know was there. You're going to face all these obstacles because you took yourself out of the will of God. And not wear it as a badge of shame, but as a testimony that God took you out of there and now he's doing something new with you. Maybe you're here today and you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life. You've been watching on Facebook for the past year or so. You've been coming to church faithfully. And yet you've never taken the most important step in your life yet. And that's asking Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. You're trying as hard as you can doing this God thing. And you're not understanding why it's not fully working. You think you see God doing stuff, and he, he absolutely is doing things in your life. But at the end of the day, you know that you're missing out on something. You know that every time you come in this building, you see others, and they, they're having a different experience than what you're having, and they're in the same building as you, and you're just wondering why. You're wondering, what's wrong with me? And I'd say, there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you at all other than you're missing one key piece, and that's Jesus. Because at the end of the day, all, all these other people in here, they're only experiencing that because of the love relationship that they have with God. And so maybe you're here today and you're thinking to yourself, I need that last piece. I need Jesus as the Lord of my life. I need to accept what Jesus did on the cross for me taking my penalty, my sin, and my shame, and dying and giving me victory over it. If that's you today, you never asked Jesus to save you. If you think you're in a right relationship with God, but you never had that moment where you just asked Him to be the Lord of your life, you need to come and do that today. You need to ask Jesus to come into your heart and have this relationship. And after you do so, you got to take the next step in baptism. You got to take the next step <clears throat> in showing your dedication to others. Because at the end of the month, we're going to have a baptism service. Uh, not the end of this month, but in July. For all those who want to be baptized. But before you can get baptized, you got to ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. So wherever you're at today, you feel like leaving the narrow road. You feel like you can't get back on the narrow road. You feel distant from God because you haven't asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. And you're not having the experience that everybody else is having in the church because you haven't asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life. Why don't you come up here and pray with me? Whatever you're going through, wherever you're at today, come and lay it at Jesus' feet.